It's time for the Daily Stand-Up Podcast presented by Agile Dad with your host, Lee Henson. Without any further ado, let's get started. It's a rare occasion when you hear me say, now this one's new to me, but I thought I'd throw this out and this was interesting. I was working with someone who was talking about an implementation of less. And if you've never heard of less, it's less.works. You can go on the internet and look it up. I am a fan. It is uh, literally scaling the Scrum framework. So it's taking all of the basic necessities of the Scrum framework and making those uh, scale. It's pretty incredible, right? But with that being said, the concept that someone came to me with was something now I've heard of Scrum of Scrums. I've even coined product owner of product owners or advanced backlog refinement, right? But someone came to me and said, what about the retro of retros? And I was like, what? And and I sat and thought about it. And I said, is this some kind of scaled retrospective meeting? And what I found was sometimes, and this is true, sometimes organizations have sprints that just kind of blend and blur into each other. Uh, the team gets so uh, wound up in the momentum of delivery that they they do retrospectives, but it's more going through the motions than anything else. They're not they're not using the retrospective as a tool to figure out ways that they can align and improve. They're more or less using the retrospective as a checklist item to say yes, we are following Agile and doing what we should be doing, and moving on. And that's not exactly what it was intended to be. So the person in my class that brought this up to me talked about the concept of something like a quarterly retrospective with a larger group of teams or a quarterly retrospective with one team. And the more I thought about it, I said, oh boy, this is time consuming. It's another meeting. For those of you who know me, you know, the number one thing that I stand for is fewer meetings, right? If, if I could get rid of every meeting, I would. But it's it's one of those things where, you know, people just can't stand spending time in meetings because that's less time they have to actually do their work. So for me, I asked, do we want to introduce another meeting? Is that safe? Is that concept going to help anyone? Or is this just another one of those attempts to to do another meeting, to, you know, check a box somewhere? And what I quickly realized was that if teams aren't getting as much value as they should out of the sprint retrospective at the end of every sprint, then why not bring them together and talk about what is working across all of the organization or across that team from multiple sprints? I think that it could be a vital opportunity to step off the treadmill, if you will, and engage in a more deep area of self-discovery. It gives the team a chance to really talk about things that they wouldn't talk about at the end of a specific sprint. I want to make sure I say that these types of meetings always come with challenges. So right away, the first thing that came to my mind was, uh, what about teams that are distributed across multiple uh, geographies across the globe? Um, How do we get people to have a high level of interaction and a shared understanding of commitment? How do we get people to work at the speed that we want to do and get the retrospective done in a timely fashion, but still get value out of it? And what I found is that I tested this and I tested it with a large organization um, and it worked well. It was a great break for the team. And what we did was I positioned it over lunch. I ordered Uber Eats, sent it to their homes. And that way everybody had a nice lunch. We were kind of hanging out talking. And it became more of a horizon to success type thing than it did. Uh, and, but it wasn't a cheerleader rah-rah meeting. It wasn't one where people got annoyed. It was more of, let's talk about what makes us successful. Let's talk about tools or keys or things that we did to help us identify emerging bottlenecks and break through, to repeat success that we had in the past, to identify and remove systemic issues that are bothering the team, whether it's cultural or environmental. Environmental. The point I'm trying to make is I see a time and a place for this. And although it's not part of a core Scrum or core Agile framework, I'm wondering, and I plan on piloting and testing, 
to see if this is something that I might include as part of my learning materials, part of my teaching materials, because while there's great value in doing this, if the team is struggling with their regular retrospectives, if a team is having successful retrospectives, I don't know if, uh, I don't know if this would work or add value if the team is already having strong retrospectives. If they're having strong retrospectives, then this isn't going to do too much. Um, I feel like it might almost create another meeting and I don't want to do that. But if the team is struggling with retrospectives, I could see where this would say, hey, let's, let's stop, take a breather, get off the treadmill, have meaningful conversation, and work together towards achieving some type of commonality. And I think that it'll bring people together, it'll open doors for deeper insights, and give people a chance to have more comprehensive discussions about things that they want to talk about, as opposed to things that are just specific to a certain sprint. Okay, that's going to do it. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Keep it short and sweet. If you have a topic you want us to discuss, learn more at AgileDad.com. We would love to hear from you. And as always, we encourage you to stay healthy, stay well, and stay agile, my friends. Until next time, do take care.